Please give me a moment while I share the PowerPoint. But before that, I would like to introduce <clears throat> Femi, ma'am. Dr. Femi Abdullah is an MBBS graduate from MES Medical College under Calcutta University. She further did her MD psychiatry from Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences. She has worked in multiple academic institutions, private and government hospitals across Kerala. She's a psychiatrist by passion and is currently working in Future Ace Hospital, Kuchi. Just give me one moment and I'll open the PowerPoint, please. First question is basically future is um, a little worrisome because we don't know what is coming next. <laughs> Just like I don't know what my next question is. So um, basically, you have to write down in specific what you're worried about. Like uh, earlier, Ms. Anu had mentioned about writing your worries. It really helps because, you know, sometimes you uh, tend to go on overthinking about. Uh, certain things, you know, like um, uh, it, in the future that you don't know about, that, you know, you just keep worrying about unnecessary things. So try to pinpoint exactly what is it that you're worrying. So then you'll realize whether it is valid or not valid. Okay. Once you write it down, you will be able to figure out what is it that exact, what exactly is it your problem. Sometimes you will be sitting and thinking, oh, will my exams go properly? Will I do well? Will I do well? There's no point worrying. Will I do well? So the problem there is, okay, um, you're worried about your exam. Yes. When you write it down, you will realize, yes, what do I have to do? I have to start working towards it. So generally writing it down helps you figure out what the underlying um, problem is. Like my, um, miss, my previous speaker had said, you know, your mind is generally very cluttered and, you know, uh, it'll, writing it down generally helps you to focus on that particular issue at that particular point. And then work towards that solution. If you're worried about your exam, buckle up and start studying. Okay. And uh, find a mentor uh, if you can't, you know, find a solution. Like, you know, sometimes it's your career that you're worried about. You don't know what to do next. Find a mentor who can help you out, you know, to work out those solutions. You can't do it on your own. Mentor can be someone much older to you. It can be a friend who is there to help you out, you know, sort out your clutter. Mm -hmm. And um, most importantly, what I started off, stop worrying about uncertainties in the future, which you can't do anything about. So, okay. Yeah, I guess that kind of answers. Yes. <laughs> Okay, the next question is, I'm depressed most of the time. How do I deal with this? Okay, um, depression, again, is uh, slightly tricky when you say I am depressed. Uh, then comes the uh, question that how do you know you're depressed? Usually, mm -hmm. like, um, again, Ms. Uh, Anu had said previously, most of the terms like depression is casually thrown around. You know, even six-year-olds come and tell, ma'am, I'm depressed. I don't even know how the kid knows whether to spell depression, but you know, casually, oh, I'm very bored, I'm very depressed. But mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes it shouldn't be thrown around casually. I'll help you understand how to differentiate between depression and normal sadness first, okay? Because that's what where we get confused most commonly. Generally, you know, we have a breakup. Um, Everybody thinks, you know, I can't get out of it. You know, I'm sad for the last two, three days. I'm in depression. No. It is very normal that you have a breakup. You are sad. You're supposed to be sad. You just lost someone who's very important to you. Hmm. Just like, you know, um, you didn't do well in an exam. You will definitely be sad. But in depression, it is a pervasive sadness where it lasts for minimum of two weeks. You know, more than two weeks, there's nothing. You're, you're not feeling any other emotion besides sadness throughout those two weeks or predominantly for those two weeks. You don't enjoy a joke. You can't read a book. You can't, um, you know, see your um, series on uh, Netflix and enjoy it. You know, you just like automated. You enjoy the jokes on friends. Uh, you know, you can't uh, appreciate anything. Your friend cracks a joke. You, know, you, know, you don't want to hang out with your friends. You don't want to eat. You don't want to take a bath. You don't want to uh, get out of bed. So all this kind of um, shows that you're depressed as opposed to sadness. Okay. Now, if it is um, mild depression or just sadness, 
uh, I tell you a few tips to get by it. But if it is, you know, slightly above that, you definitely have to get help, be it therapy or uh, medication, whatever works. Moderate to severe depression requires medicines along with therapy. Definitely has a better effect. But yes, you will require it. So how do we differentiate, um, uh, how do we uh, go about helping ourselves when we are on the lower spectrum? But yes, we're not happy with ourselves. Okay, so if it's mild, you can, um, you know, start off by uh, small things at a time. Like, you know, work on one day at a time, that moment at a time. Okay, if uh, today was bad, tomorrow need not be, can be a thought you can work on. Because generally when we go into these uh, low moods and negative thinking styles, we have what is called as hopelessness. We look at our future and we can't see anything to, you know, look forward to. You think, you know, today is bad, tomorrow is going to be just the same. So you can try to work on that thought first. Okay, today I put aside. Okay. And stop overgeneralizing. Okay. Overgeneralization is, um, you know, cognitive error. Um, that's a medical terminology. How do we put it simply? Uh, is um, is a thinking style that is not um, that is maladaptive that doesn't fit properly you know with uh, being happy or you know so uh, what when we are in uh, having negative emotions what do you generally we have one bad day and think every day is bad or you know uh, you don't see what went positive in that day maybe you can try writing about what went well in that day you know, you can sit down just before going to bed, uh, take a journal and write, you know, today, uh, yes, uh, today I met an old friend. Yes, that was a good thing. Um, mom made biryani, that was a good thing. So there might be so many things. It might be really small as opposed to your breakup. But yes, they are good things that happened in your day. So you might gradually realize that uh, your day wasn't all bad. You know, that is very important to keep your hopes up if you want to get out of your negative mood. The more we indulge in the negativity of your mood, the lower and deeper you go. You know, it's like going down the well. The more you try to get out of it will be the only way to get out of depression. Depression, uh, I I feel very bad when people, uh, you know, throw it around very um, easily, you know, like I started off. Because I have seen people in depression who struggle with it, who don't feel any day they can fight, you know. So we we should make that effort, you know, if you are in a milder stage of depression or, you know, you have sadness or you have issues that you can't handle for a few days, you don't want to be there, you don't want to go deeper, you have to try to get out, okay. And uh, most of my audience is, um, I believe, our engineers, so... I don't have to tell you to think logically. You can use logic as your weapon. You know, it's a very strong uh, weapon to, you know, fight your irrational, that little irrational voice in your head that keeps telling you negative things and tries to push you down. Fight it with logic, you know. Uh, if you feel, you know, your friend, you have texted your friend and your friend hasn't replied and you're thinking, you know, oh my God, she doesn't like me. She's not replying my message. An easier alternative logical explanation could be she's just busy. So, you know, it will be going easy on her as well as yourself. So, and uh, the other simple te tips everybody knows, you know, exercise, eat healthy. Exercise shouldn't be taken lightly because exercise improves the dopamine in the brain hmm. and helps you to get out of it. Okay, depression primarily is a biological disorder, which is why sometimes you don't need a trigger for depression. It is because of the changes in the neurotransmitters in your brain that you experience that kind of pervasive sadness. Okay, okay. so we have ways to correct that chemical imbalance. And then you have to try to start a healthy routine, which, yes, initially will be difficult to stick to. First, start with fixing your sleep, you know, try to sleep well every day. A well-rested brain is less likely to be cranky like a well-rested mom. Uh, so, mm. you rest your brain, it is less likely to give you pain. And also, give yourself graded tasks. You know, today you did this, okay, tomorrow I'll do a little more. And gradually try to get out of it. And yes, like my previous uh, speaker said, self-affirmative, you know, appreciating yourself, self-talking is very good. Uh, practicing mindfulness is brilliant. Meditation, yoga, all that helps. Add to it. And maintain, last but not the least, maintain a gratitude journal. You know, uh, like I said, writing the positive things, you find things to say thank you for 
for what happened on that day really helps you you might feel uh, another feature in depression is that you might feel you're helpless there's nobody to help you get out of this mess sometimes writing this will make you realize yes there are people around you who care about you who really want you to get better so do these things most likely you'll get out of do mat then there are people to help you around you i'm sure mama my mom will spot you right around the corner <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm sure she has <laughs> Okay how do i cope with anxiety related to exams ha huh, exams um every student's major uh, problem <laughs> exam uh, basically there's no easy way out being well prepared uh, for an exam is the best way to tackle an exam but yes um generally what happens is like uh, previously uh, someone had asked you know i put my assignments to my last uh, midnight to start working on them exams are not something that you should try to cramp uh, the night before the exam because um, generally we remember things when uh, our memory consolidation works when we sleep so we need a good night sleep and what you study regularly is what you're able to reproduce the next day many people come to me and tell me exam i get so stressed during exam i totally blank out i can't remember anything then i have to sit and i struggle with it this you don't lose memory you're not a patient of dementia you don't lose memory okay so anything that you have learned have learned again for learning you have to concentrate be attentive and make sure it is there if you put it in a cupboard safely it will be there in that cupboard and you have to do it peacefully to know, remember which cupboard you have put it these are some of the things that are required while trying to learn okay so you have to learn regularly and revise it to remember that you know it is that place where i have put it what happens is when we generally uh, rush and learn last minute studies we don't get time to revise so we don't know where it is sometimes it's there in the brain but we're not able to recollect for a good you know when we study properly we have to whatever we have learned has to be stored and recollected properly okay so uh, one exercise that you can do is you can uh, work on um, you know maybe when you're studying itself you can practice recollection like you know if uh, whatever topic you studied the previous day close your um, you know keep your book closed and uh, try to think okay uh, this heading um, what comes under this heading okay this 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 point 3.3 4.5 like that try to recollect it by yourself and then go back and check if you have missed any points this will help you help improve recollection it will prevent blanking out okay and um, like i said uh, to avoid last minute cramping at least by the time the exam dates are out we have to plan uh, generally universities give at least a month before the dates are out usually so at least that one month at least you have to plan properly for your subjects preferably when they are taught a regular practice of studies really help and a um, few tricks and treats if you want uh, would be to you know sit in the same place study in the same time all those things improve concentration because our brain is like an animal brain uh you know you can train it to uh, work so when you sit in the same place every day at the same time uh, your brain starts saying ha huh, it's time for me to concentrate it's time for my uh, daily intake of uh, you know studies just like we go to the loo in the morning the bathroom in the morning if you practice it really it, you get trained well okay and um, um revision you can do fast reading instead of you know it, if you're worried you won't have time for revision but always like i said when the dates come itself put the slots for revision also when you're making the plan itself for both study and revision and then don't give up you know don't that happens generally for entrance exams you know i have a lot of patients who come because they stood entrance exam students and they worried you know i'm tired i've been going through this for the second time and i'm just i can't just push myself no don't give up you know just be positive i'm confident that you would have learned more the second time when you're revising it so there's no way it's going out of your head anyway it's whatever you have learned is definitely there somewhere you just have to find it okay and make that commitment today that from today at least i will go on regularly <laughs> that will help prevent anxiety next time okay can i ask my next question yes yes sure 
How can a person with low physical appearance <clears throat> boost self-esteem? Physical appearance. Beauty, yeah. I think, lies in the eyes of the beholder. It's for us to decide True. whether we're beautiful or not. Um, it says uh, low physical appearance. I don't know who said that. You know, whether it's your perception of yourself or has someone told you that you have an issue with your appearance because most commonly what I find especially among teenagers is that uh, there might be a slight curve in the nose which uh, you know when the teenager mentions to me I have to look twice to notice mm. but the child might um, the child or adult or teenager might be really um, worried about that little uh, crook on the nose which is barely noticeable uh, and, you know, would keep going on about how, you know, uh, can't move on, can't speak to another person because uh, that uh, person might be feeling that, you know, okay, the person opposite of me is staring at my nose and looking at my crook and not, you know, uh, as obviously sitting there and judging my appearance. No, it doesn't happen that way, you know. Mm -hmm. So how we think about our self-appearance makes a lot of difference. And that thought is what is bringing your self-esteem down and if you have repeated thoughts you have to check if you're going through something like a body dysmorphic disorder what is body deformed dysmorphic disorder is there is not much of a problem in the body per se but you know you we get really conscious about how we look even mm. though though i really wish to look like i should arrive myself but uh, it's not always possible no so we have to make do with what we have <laughs> uh, certain therapies that were mentioned by miss sanu like acceptance accepting um our thoughts help us with body dysmorphic disorder along with mindfulness and cbt um and i think accepting our looks really will boost our self-esteem and plus you know nowadays if i'm a little dark yes definitely a foundation of a lighter shade can help <laughs> and people with body dysmorphic disorder lots of them they go through unnecessary surgery they go to pl they're the people you know who feed plastic surgeons literally feed their pockets mm. so just see if it is really valid because i don't think anybody is really ugly unless they're ugly inside your looks don't matter that much. It's just who you are that matters. So work on that. Right. So true. It's inside that matters, not outside, right? Yeah, I'm sure I would be really hurt if my husband told me 40 years down the lane, uh, in line that, you know, you're like all gray and uh, wrinkled. I've been with him for so long. It's what's inside that matters, right? Yes, true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I think this is related to the previous question itself. What all activities can be done for self-love? Hmm, self-love. It's it, Nobody asked me what all can be done for falling in love with another person. It's so difficult to fall in love with a person you have been with since birth. Huh? <laughs> self-love <laughs> is, <what, laughs> is difficult. Huh? Okay. Uh, I think... Um, Generally, why we find it difficult to love ourselves is because you know all your flaws, right? Because you don't know anybody else's every flaw or something. We're too judgmental about ourselves. We think, uh, you know, um, uh, probably, uh, okay, after this presentation, I might be thinking, oh, I could have, you know, maybe done it slightly different. No, oh, I didn't go that well. I, You know, that's me judging my, yes, it is important for me to maybe do a little better next time but sometimes this judgmental nature gets a little harsh we don't do that yeah. to others you know someone does a presentation you definitely will go tell them yes you did a great job and maybe yeah you could have added a few more points there that's it right but what do you do to yourself oh what is this you were sweating there oh my god i'm sure he would have thought you uh, you said all the rubbish things uh, all your answers were inappropriate you would keep running this through your head right so avoid hmm. self judgment start trusting yourself and always you know uh, be nice to yourself you know you can sometimes you know uh, dress up just to look nice and then you know say ha huh, you look good not bad huh? not bad for a 35 year old or a 40 year old <laughs> so yeah hmm. so i think um, uh, all these you know focusing on those things that you love about yourself that you 
not love about yourself that would be quoting the question that you uh, appreciate a uh, think are good within you would be the first step when you fall in love with another person at least in the first um, few months of uh, the love you don't notice any flaws in that person you think that person is like perfect so try that on yourself <laughs> right right okay i need help implementing a good habit in my life for example study daily but i'm unable to do so so can you i think the person needs ways how one can implement a good habit in their life yeah i've been working on it myself exercise is a habit that i take a resolution every year but yeah <laughs> okay um it's an uphill task yes in um any habit is an uphill task um except for probably our routines that we've done since childhood like brushing and all that <laughs> everything else is an uphill task okay so go slow on it and any habit that has to be learned we might think okay i practiced it for a week or two and why is it that i'm falling back on my routine no <laughs> to form a habit you need like 21 days to 3 months minimum to you know okay say okay you've done something to work on that habit and the problem with a habit like studies is the reinforcement of that habit is very little it's not uh, something like you know okay if i want to make a habit of watching a movie episode uh, or a series episode every day at 8 pm do you think i'll find it as difficult as probably going to the gym every day at 8 it is immediately reinforcing it is very reinforcing and you know uh, in the case of the exercise probably i'll require at least a week to start seeing a change in my uh, you know weighing scale for me to get like a pat on my shoulder saying yeah good job but studies is not even like that you need at least your sem exams to at least find a difference so to go on consistently is very difficult because there is very little reinforcement so you have to yourself set a goal for yourself okay and um okay. studies have said that you know a habit builds better when it is attached to a cue like why is it that we brush it is probably the only thing that everybody does unanimously correctly why do we brush before we um, as soon as we wake up why is it more difficult easier to um, practice brushing in the morning than at night though the dentists say it is more important to brush at night why is it that we all do that is because we have linked to to a cue which is waking up from the bed early morning go brush your teeth so it's become mm. a habit because you have related it to something so try doing that when you're building a new habit studies maybe you can put a pattern like if you're going to play at 5 o'clock you back you know uh, at 6 maybe i will i take a shower at 6 and immediately sit for studies so you can cue it with something okay, okay. <laughs> um it's more easier for exercise like you can put a pattern like in the morning i'll wake up i'll brush and then i'll go so mm. try to do that something uh, then you can put like miss um, anu said you can put reminders uh, you know for reminding yourself about your goal or things you want you know done and um, sometimes you have to add fun to the whole activity that you're trying to you know which is why now people instead of going to the gym they prefer zumba it's more fun so another thing that you can try is maybe okay i will complete so much portion you can decide with a friend after that we'll do a group revision or a combined study that will kind of motivate us because you have a deadline and you have to finish so much so it will bring about a regular practice where you know so many people are involved every week you have a group revision something like that and obviously at least uh, 60% of the group revision i hope will be productive <laughs> so <laughs> that should be positive yeah. reinforcement and uh, last but not the least try to visualize your goal like you know okay why I- i'm doing engineering i want to get here have a goal in mind yes that's where i'm trying to be visualize yourself maybe if it's a short term goal like graduating from your college visualize yourself in that you know graduation ceremony a visual image of is a very strong positive reinforcement keep thinking yes i want to stand there make my parents proud you know that emotion will drive you further try working on okay. that next question i have commitment issues i lose feelings for someone mm-hmm. after nearly a year after i get into a relationship 
and this has happened many times to a point where i hate the person i am in a relationship with and i hurt them unnecessarily i literally start hating them and feel like i want to get out of relationship only to get into another relationship later what do i do and what is the cause for this uh commitment issues per se can stem from a lot of causes it can be you know issues in childhood where you have attachment issues i don't know what the rest of the background of uh, the person asking this question is uh, it can be because uh, attachment figures you know you didn't have proper attachments or it can be because a personality is developing where you have issues with relationships you know your um, so that has to be evaluated further whether there is an underlying uh, personality or uh, whether it is underlying trauma what it is has to be evaluated depending on that yes definitely treatment is available i, I don't think i can say further for this question i think whoever has asked this question they can either uh, you know consult you or any other psychologist later right if this yeah. is required if any further uh, you know explanation is required i think they can contact okay uh, how do i overcome social anxiety social anxiety okay social anxiety um, basically social anxiety is something where you feel you know when we are talking to someone in public um, you know they are judging us they are you know um, evaluating us you feel you know you're constantly monitored sometimes you feel people are speaking a little are they you know speaking all about me it's like you no know, thoughts are there and you're like really worried about uh, facing public sometimes uh, there um, you know these symptoms are so uh, predominant that you know they get uh, their heart rates kind of escalate uh they have sweaty palms and they really they're not able to focus on what they're trying to say. they're not uh, sorry i got a call uh they're not try, uh, able to focus on what they're saying and all this kind of makes it very difficult for them to have a normal interaction okay mm-hmm. how do you go about it? um some of the greeting exercises oh um i believe uh, miss anu was planning to do a greeting exercise i Yes, I didn't let her. <laughs> I started off way too early. Uh, breathing exercises, relaxation techniques can really help bring down um, any kind of anxiety, generalized anxiety, uh, social anxiety, or other types of anxiety. So, when you bring down this basal anxiety, you'll be able to face most of these. Then another technique is during therapy we help. guide them with social interactions you know we actually uh, do role play and you know we kind of guide them with the social interactions so that you know they feel okay now i can face it better when i have to do a presentation or you know those kind of things yes there are medications also that can help with you know um, if it's a performance like there are medicines that you can take just prior to performing on stage there are singers who do that after the performance they are otherwise okay with every other kind of interactions so it whatever type of anxiety can be dealt with this way. and uh, uh, mindfulness is again something you can practice prior to you know getting there you can practice prior to going to a um, what social situation that you're not comfortable with and it will cause relaxation i'll also tell you how breathe everybody takes breathing very lightly you know because i find people ah breathing i've heard so many times or does it uh, just taking in uh, air and leaving out air every day i do it like you know many times uh, but it doesn't really help with anxiety how it works is basically when we get anxious we tend to breathe in and out faster and more okay we tend to hyperventilate as in breathe more so when we do the opposite like you know we are uh, breathing slowly we tend to confuse our brain ha huh? is she anxious or is she relaxed so when we breathe slowly the brain gets the signal that we are relaxed so the brain kind of tends to go into a relaxed mode and gradually reduce our heart rate and gradually make us you know go like that. so it is something you should all try along with other relaxation techniques okay. hope that answers the question yeah 
Okay, so I have extreme social anxiety when I talk to girls, but not with boys. I'm a girl. What do I do? Social anxiety need not. Yes, sometimes uh, we commonly say that boys have social anxiety when they talk to girls. But yes, girls can also have social anxiety. When they talk. See, it depends on the situation where you feel you're judged by someone else. And uh, you have to... Um, it says extreme social anxiety. Is it particular to certain girls is another thing that you have to look. Whether it is because of their interactions that you're having a problem or is it with all the girls. So those kind of things has to be looked into. But yes, regarding social anxiety, per se, I think I've answered in the previous question. Yes. Okay. How to reduce overthinking? I overthink about what people think of me when someone is talking to me. Um, reducing overthinking is uh, something that I um, said earlier also, like, um, you know, you can um, uh, take, make notes of what is appropriate and try to solve one problem at a time. And the second part of the question, overthink about what people think of me when they're talking to me is again a sign of social anxiety. That is where you feel very judged. So. I think you have to work on the social anxiety again. Okay. What may include sleeping disorders? <laughs> Sleep disorders uh, is actually like, you know, it's a huge um, topic. Uh, Sleep disorders. Um, I'm surprised that someone asked something like, you know, what includes sleep disorders because it's like two, three essays for me in my MD curriculum, you know. Okay. okay. Basically, commonly sleep disorders would, uh, most commonly mentioned one would be insomnia. Insomnia is you're not getting sleep, whether it is uh, early, middle or late. As in early as in you have difficulty initiating sleep, middle is you have difficulty maintaining sleep. Uh, late insomnia would be difficulty, you know, um, you have early wakening. So it can be either of that. And insomnia, uh, as in the sleep difficulty, could be uh, because of psychological difficulties or it could be because of uh, reasons in your brain. Okay. Mm. Uh, what it is, what is the reason would be evaluated by your doctor. But if it is psychological insomnia, that is what we first rule out. We look for other comorbidities. If there's nothing else, we go for psychological insomnia. The psychological insomnia, okay, he, he's uh, what may include uh, treatment I'm not going into. Include other uh, sleep disorders are narcolepsy. For example, narcolepsy is like the person uh, during daytime has excessive sleep. You know, he's probably, if I have narcolepsy, I'm going into this meeting and suddenly I fall asleep. Like a few minutes, I'm just oh. like, asleep and I lose my tone and I just like go off, like fall off. Okay. And um, other sleep disorders would be breathing related sleep disorders. Like you know, you have people who snore, like sleep apnea. Yeah. That is only due to an obstruction either in the breathing pathway or uh, it can have a central cause which because of the breathing issue, the person keeps waking. There's an, if there's a, for example, a obstruction in the nose that's causing the snoring and the person is not getting breath he might mm. lightly wake up. You might not notice a person who is snoring as to uh, that he's waking up, but his sleep on a sleep record, on a polysomnograph, which is a sleep record, he'll notice that he's waking up at night multiple times. Okay, so oh. that is sleep apnea because of lack of breathing, the person wakes up. Then there's this huge class called parasomnias where. Uh, Okay, it's very technical, I feel now. Uh, where the person's sleep is disturbed because of um, maybe some people have restless leg syndrome. As in the person is sleeping, the person has this urge to move the leg all the time and that disturbs the sleep. Or they may have um, nightmares or night errors or uh, uh, sleep paralysis where the person actually wakes up from the sleep but is not able to move the body. It's a very scary uh, this thing as the person is awake but for the first few minutes he's not able to move his body so that mm. is again a sleep disorder some the commonly heard one talking in the sleep walking in the sleep all those will come under sleep parasomnia then um there is circadian rhythm disorders which is basically where you have shift workers or uh, you know when shift workers were having disturbances in their 
circadian rhythm, like the normal time of sleep, which gets disturbed. Mm -hmm. Or um, uh, when we travel, you have jet lag, all that, all these, all of this comes under sleep disorders. I don't think this was the answer that they wanted, but I'm not sure what, what it was. So I answered so the question. That's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, ma'am. Okay, can ADHD be treated without medication? And are these safe, as in the medication, safe in the long term? ADHD, mm, see, generally, um, psychological or psychiatric issues in childhood, we, uh, you know, uh, the dictum is wait, 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 wait with therapy, wait with therapy, wait with therapy, and then only initiate medication because it's a child you don't want to start medicines immediately that is the dictum except in adhd okay adhd is the only uh, disorder where you know we might recommend medications a slight because of the evidence okay uh, is there any treatment without medication yes we give attention enhancing tasks especially if the child is really small we uh, try to give attention enhancing tasks and some some of these things to Oh, I'm sorry. Is my network having problems? Am I not audible? Uh, you're audible to me right now. Okay. So those things can, um, ADHD um, can be treated with those attention enhancing tasks and all those things. But does it treat it adequately? Not really. If you actually have a proper ADHD, it generally requires medication. Okay, for it to have proper control uh, because um, studies have shown that um, when we compare both a person on medication generally performs better long term than someone who's and that again is someone diagnosed with ADHD. I find children coming uh, because of the over information provided by our Google uh, aunt uh, <laughs> saying that you know, I can't concentrate you Google and they'll give you ADHD. And they think they have ADHD, which makes it very difficult for me to diagnose also because I also get confused after some time. Huh? The person comes to me saying the criteria for ADHD from Google. So <laughs> I have nothing more to ask because they're already saying <laughs> every criteria. So uh, that's another thing. So will um, are there side effects? Yes, medicines, those are generally ADHD is treated with medicines like methylphenidate or atomoxetin. Uh, they are uh, methylphenidate is a stimulant category drug. Yes, there are side effects, but generally do doctors will ask you to stay on regular follow up and to watch whether these, any of those side effects are developing. And if they are, you will be changed to another me medication or, you know, your doses will be adjusted based on it. Okay. On a long term, ADHD also has a lot of side effects. Problem with ADHD, untreated ADHD uh, is a forerunner for conduct disorder, which is where person has a lot of behavioral issues. Conduct disorder is again a forerunner for antisocial personality disorder. So all these, when you look at the comorbidities that uh, a person with untreated ADHD, untreated ADHD can lead to learning disability. The child is not able to learn properly. Hmm. Uh, you know, acquired. Actually, he doesn't have any problem that should actually cause learning disability, but because he's not able to maintain his attention, he might not be learning properly. So, a lot of oh. uh, other comorbid issues also come if untreated. So, yeah, oh. it requires treatment and it is not a medicine that you can buy over the counter or should, uh, you know, attempt to treat yourself with. No. Okay. Okay. Um, next is, could you tell me the effects of a schizophrenic medicine on a person for 10 years? Does it change their behavior and mindset automatically? And do they become dependent on the medicine and worse than what they used to be? Okay. Effect of a schizophrenic medicine, which schizophrenic medicine? <laughs> See, uh, schizophrenia is a um, long-term chronic mental disorder, which requires long-term medication. Yes, uh, um, schizophrenia is not um, generally when we when I psychoeducate my patients about schizophrenia, I generally like to compare it with a disease like diabetes. It is not a disease that comes to and goes. You know, it is a chronic disease. It stays. But just like diabetes, you can 
uh, treat it adequately and keep its symptoms in control so that the person can lead a very normal life without you know being affected by it um and uh, schizophrenia uh, on a long term if not treated properly it is a disorder of the brain everybody has this uh, myth mythful belief that you know mental health illnesses are of the mind somewhere here you know it's all hocus pocus no it is basically your brain that is your mind and everything that you are so mm. uh, schizophrenia is again a disorder where neurotransmitters in the brain their imbalance is causing that person to behave uh, differently okay earlier uh, medicines i had heard a question about uh, a person had asked about the grandmother the earlier medications were very less probably when the grandmother was young medi- availability of medicines were very less so there was just um, option of giving medicines if the patient is like really restless you can only sedate the patient those were the few options available but now it is not like that you everybody wants to be functional nobody wants to have medicines and you know sit at home just you know drowsy or anything so medications are available that will let you have your medicine and go to work the next day work perfectly fine over a period of time schizophrenia per se causes reduction in attention reduction in concentration person's thinking abilities change it it need not be directly implicated because of the medication usually untreated schizophrenia has a worse prognosis than treated schizophrenia and um, about the last part do you become dependent on the medicine no schizophrenia is primarily treated with antipsychotic medications none of which have dependence none okay. of your antipsychotic medications have dependence. okay what is the easiest way to identify bipolar disorder ha huh, i'll give you my number call me <laughs> easiest way would be that. um how to identify yes bipolar disorders if you're asking me is there a test that you're going to just give your blood and know if you have bipolar no there is no blood test it is a clinical diagnosis so easiest way would be to go to a clinician but uh, i'll tell you what bipolar disorder is primarily about bipolar disorder is a mood disorder okay everybody knows i hope at least after my first uh, answer what depression is mm. so um, depression is a sinking of your mood to the lower spectrum like you're sad okay from your normal range all of us fall within a normal range of emotions you have sadness you have happiness you have uh, you know you are very tired and down you are happy and up and about okay mm. so there is this range of normal emotions between which you keep fluctuating during the day during the week during a month every day okay but when you have a mood disorder for example depression you go into a dip which is lower than your normal fluctuation into much lower and it persists for a long period of time that is depression okay in bipolar disorder there is this pole which is the depressive pole and there is also the other pole where you're very happy you're very talkative you're very energetic you're very uh, you're all set to make a lot of plans you know you make 10 different business plans and you put your money there you put your money here and do all of it because you're all all too optimistic that you know every business plan will work you don't think it through so that's the other end of you know other pole of your depression depression would be where you don't feel like going out of your house here you are everywhere mm. so that's a manic episode so that's the other end of the pole so when both these poles exist and not just unipolar depression it is called a bipolar disorder so if you have these mood fluctuations then it is bipolar disorder there are different variants in bipolar disorder but that's too much Okay. How to deal with bullies? I think my mom should answer that. <laughs> How do you deal with bullies in college? <laughs> yeah, but um, step one is uh, identifying you're being bullied. You know that actually everybody in schools and all there's this image that you know you hit someone. You're you know physical bullying is very easy to identify because it comes to us naturally. You know you have this image of a big. boy you know hitting you there and that's he's a bully okay uh, but sometimes what i notice it when we take history detailed history is only when 
you know you get bullying from a person's history sometimes there's always this emotional bullying that goes around even in workplace is there where the coworker chuma for fun spreads random gossips or you know that is bullying you know regularly spreading negative gossips about someone or an employer uh, intentionally you know micro scrutinizing your one particular employee's work repeatedly uh, or uh, in a public meeting repeatedly picking on someone or that also caters to bullying so it might be emotional it might be physical physical is yes very easy to identify sometimes it might be sexist or discriminatory messages in the groups or you know that kind of comments if you are uh, it depends how to tackle bullying depends where you are if you are in school talk to your teacher if you are in um, you know in a college you know get help from your um, you know principal or your mentor or whoever is there if you are working in a company research your policy company policy on bullying most mncs and uh, big companies they have a fixed protocols for the, these things and before you um, talk to anybody else you know stand up for yourself and try talking to the bully themselves if you can do it you know because what that person does to your mental health you, you know when you identify he's bullying you emotionally you would have probably realized he's destroying your mental health so you have to stand up for your mental health if somebody takes your uh, property and says you know this is my property this is my house would you just stand there oh this is your house this is not mine no huh? this is yours you won't stand there no huh? you'll throw that person physically out of your house no 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 this is my house same way somebody walks of you makes you feel horrible it is affecting our mental health stand up for yourself talk to the bully tell him hold your ground say what you ask first to okay, why you are doing because you have to be sure you didn't misinterpret a single situation as you know as being bullied if it is continuous if it is persistent ask why is it that you know i have been treated like this in these particular instances and uh, if that doesn't really help you can talk to someone about that maybe your hr or someone about that if you are in a workplace and um, if they ask for you know if they micro scrutinizing your work maybe you can ask for emails or written as in what is wrong in my work can you mail me regarding what is wrong so that will also help you to document and keep this is like something i learned from experience you have to document and keep uh, proof of the bullying also if at all you know it comes to a stage where you want to take it further that's another way of you know keep screenshots of the messages that i am inappropriate even i see that um, it even uh, cyber bullying is something that is very common so you have to know that you are being bullied you can report it there is it is not your fault if you are being bullied it is generally the fault of the bully because it might be attention seeking behavior it might be the insecurities of the bully that is driving that bully forward or maybe the bully might be having a personality disorder because of which he is doing it is not your fault so you can talk about it to anybody because it's not your fault it's somebody else's fault okay so stand up okay ma'am yeah. how to get rid of mobile phone addiction <clears throat> I think this is the last question, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nobody has asked any questions in the chat box. Ma'am, I can't see the chat box. Sorry, I have shared my screen. So. Ah uh, yes, they have asked. Ah, uh, there is one. How to deal with sudden panic attacks? I'll just put this question. Hi. Okay. Hmm. Mobile addiction is uh, something that is very trending now. Everybody uses this mobile addiction statement. Sometimes it's just mobile overuse and not addiction per se. Addiction is a very technical terminology. Um, again, another terminology that you should not like use very casually. Uh, when you say someone is addicted, is when you find it difficult to you know keep your phone aside even for a little while when. Um, even when you know during meetings when you're not you're in a position not you know you're not in a position to look at your mobile you keep checking it you feel uncomfortable when you don't have your phone with you so all that might show that you know you're gradually showing excessive use of the mobile phone like before you used to use for a few hours and now the duration of use has increased and despite that increase in duration of use you still not satisfied you want to use more 
Hmm. So there are so many things that you have to look whether it is addiction. Sometimes people use mobile phones or binge on series on the phone because they are underlying depressed. So that's another comorbidity. So these have to be differentiated. But yes, if you want to cut down your mobile use, digital detox is one of the ways to go by it, where you know you. uh set limits you know you have to set limits uh you have apps where they tell you you know you so many hours of use so many hours of use review your use every day check through those apps whether you're using appropriately if your gaming is like 7 hours a day it is not appropriate gaming use you don't have to game for 7 hours a day uh maybe people might need to use the whatsapp or uh, zoom meeting for Larger periods of the time. Now that everything is online, but otherwise, uh, you don't have to use your Instagram for seven hours a day. So, review your use, see where it is inappropriate. Try try to um, shorten those uh, areas where you're using excessively. Then you can start practicing by you know when you're going to nearby places, don't take your phone when it's absolutely not necessary. You're going to the shop right next door. Why do you have to carry your phone? We lived that way when I was. 15 but now even yeah. for me it's very difficult i'll be like oh where's my phone i'm getting out of the house it's just like you know carrying your house keys you have to have it <laughs> so it's not like that it doesn't have to be a part of your being you know you don't have it's not a part of your body it just separate you have to see it separate so leave it somewhere gradually increase the duration that you're leaving it somewhere especially night time if you want to improve your sleep pattern avoid using screens be it the laptops be it the mobile be it the tv uh, one hour prior to your sleep it is not good you have to keep your mobile phones away and keep it away in a way that when you're going to sleep you know you do the ringing doesn't wake you up the messaging i don't have that option because i get called from the hospital but definitely engineers have that option so keep it away <laughs> so keep it away and stay away from it so gradually increase that time you will be able to work on your excessive use addiction is a different category and if you have underlying depression that also requires separate help okay ma'am i think yes that's that's about it with respect to the questions that were asked uh, in the form um i don't know my mom if there are any in the chat yeah, there, there was one in the chat box how to deal with sudden panic attack just before entering exam hall which may also cause brain fade which may also cause brain fade brain uh, fade brain. <laughs> new new terminologies um yeah i think they mean that uh, the answer fades away I'm not sure uh, yeah panic attack uh, dealing with panic attacks yes if you're having proper panic attacks i don't know if it's proper panic attacks because it's a medical terminology it is a diagnosis uh if you're having a proper panic attack generally you will be experiencing a gradually increasing pattern of uh, increased um, palpitations that is increased heart rate sweating want to get out of that place you it is almost like a near death experience you know you feel that you can't uh, something is going to happen to you and you know another 5 minutes so it it's like 5 max 10 to 15 minutes it goes up and then it reaches the peak position and then it subsides so it follows this crescent of pattern and you generally say you have that kind of attacks uh and we diagnose a panic disorder if you have repeated attacks uh, over the last one month okay so if that is there usually it is quite serious but i'm assuming that is not there and uh, it is very mild um in which case breathing is an exercise that will help you calm down relax at that point then uh, there is jpmr jacobson's progressive muscle relaxation which is an exercise that you can um uh, that yes you can uh, google and um, it, there are videos online but ideally i would prefer if the therapist sits with you and goes through that relaxation exercise and that will only help you if you practice it regularly see everybody has this thing that um, you know you go to a therapist the therapist does everything uh, and you will be all better no it doesn't work like a surgeon you know where you go to a surgery you just have to you know sleep through the surgery and you're up yes 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 you're all good surgeon has done his job no 
they don't charge as much as surgeons do so part of the job you have to do so uh, you go to a therapist they will guide you with the therapy which you have to practice it is just like any skill so if you learn driving you have to practice it properly if you want to be an expert driver the first day you do driving and you you know you just got your license in your home and your father says you have he has a heart attack would you be able to drive him to the hospital would you be confident driving him to the hospital no right you have to have practiced it adequately to get out of that anxiety and be able to do that so you have to practice jpmr and breathing exercises regularly to be able to tackle a panic attack at that moment you can't do it for the first time okay you go to the therapist learn it you know oh, when i have the panic attack i'll look into it no it doesn't work like that because so if you do it consistently it will help you otherwise you might if you have proper panic attacks you might need medication thank you any other guys, questions guys any other queries you can please either unmute yourself or put in chat all right so i think uh, that's about it ma'am uh, anybody any questions since right. most of the queries are clear we can wind up today's session sure thank you for joining us for this amazing session it was really engaging and insightful on behalf of the itri education society kerala chapter we would like to present anu suraj and dr femi abdullah with a token of gratitude in appreciation for your efforts and support thank you thank you ma'am thank you so much for your patient uh, answering of all the queries i'm sure the people who asked the queries would have got their answers so thank you so much ma'am for for giving us your time and and your insightful knowledge as well so thank you so much the pleasure is all mine it's it's actually fun interacting with uh, you know youngsters but uh, unfortunately i didn't get to see anyone in this uh, online session but yeah I, it would have been more fun if it was offline <laughs> yeah i know uh, but yeah i i mean uh, the reason we thought of online rather than offline is more people can join in others they have to come to kochi because there are some people here not from kochi so I, they they would have missed out on it so that's the reason why we thought of online maybe after some time maybe you know a few months down the line we'll have an offline yeah we'll have an offline yeah <laughs> all right thank you ma'am thank you so much man thank you yeah my please uh, make a plan for arranging more uh, programs in this fashion okay sure. Sure, yeah sure. this is a very beneficial to our uh, student members as well as professionals who are listening to this also is uh, much useful and helpful for uh, understanding things in much a better way thank you thank you all uh, for joining our edge soak uh, kerala chapter uh, even and thank you once again and uh, your uh, maya your sister's name veena srila 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 yeah srila menon and uh, femina and the other speaker of the day thank you all thank you very much thank you, thank you sir thank you so much yeah. have a beautiful weekend bye bye bye